It's great to be back together, isn't it? Oh, First time this weekend. It is um, fantastic to be back, though, isn't it? Me, me and you in the dream commentary box. Absolutely. Always goes well. Jack getting us underway with a signature break. Straight back up the middle of the table and a decent opportunity. That said, I'm not sure he has an opening red. Yeah, and he, he would love to go for the reds here and possibly looking at the red into the right corner at the moment. But other than that, maybe a thin one to the left middle and a little bit risky where the cue ball's going. Definitely the heavy, heavily favoured colour set here, Aaron. Aaron. Yeah, it was a nice opening shot as well there. Um, probably actually got into it more than he wanted to. He probably wanted to cannon the red, which is on the right-hand rail, but still a very good opportunity from here. interesting with Jack Wheel and I mentioned it a couple of hours ago when I sat in this seat with Stephen James and that having spent so much time over in China and not been able to practice at English pool do you think that's maybe taken a bit of the expectation off his own shoulders? Possibly um, I know it's very hard to mix um, different cue sports and I know a few of them have been doing it at the moment but it's um, Certainly hard to come back from that and start playing your best pool. Certainly the start of the weekend anyway. And, and possibly that's why he didn't do so well in the first event. And once he's got back into it, maybe he's, you know, he's started to do well in this event, possibly. Well, he's looked very sharp this far over the last three or four days, has the wonder. His match against Paul Clack, I think he might have been... 5-2 behind at one point and uh, managed to win that one 7-5 so got a string of games together and after that opening pot has rattled off the remaining reds and he will open us up one frame to nil Mark Fleming loading up I think he's the only player I see do that back and forth with the cue so fast Almost like a machine gun, getting ready to load it up and unleash all the power into the pack. Yeah, something I've tried myself before, similar to that. And what he's doing there is he's trying to get he's trying to get a lot of speed into the break, probably rather than maybe as much power as other players. But the the quick back and forth of the queue is to try and get a lot of speed into the break. Did you find that you lost a bit of the timing then when you started to experiment with that method? Yeah, I think so. And and also, I feel it's harder to hit the centre of the cue ball as well, or at least where you're trying to hit. And, yeah, I found myself losing the cue ball a lot more, breaking like that. But obviously, Mark has clearly worked on that and he finds that that's the best way for him to break. Well, it's working for him. He's got him this far in the tournament, so who can argue? Just looking to keep things tight as the layout's very awkward on both colour sets. I think for Jack here, he would love to play some sort of loss of turn shot and especially if having more of the yellows on the table than Mark has reds. If he can play that sort of shot now, which I think he's trying to do, flick off it, and he's played that. Well, what he was trying to do there, he's popped both reds in that shot. And unfortunately, this red has just stopped up over the pocket, and Mark can actually play a free ball plant now, red onto yellow onto red, and potentially could open up this bad red, which is on the rail at the moment. This is very aggressive. Very well judged. 
Where is this red going to stop? It is in a potable position. And the red that ne next to the eight ball, Aaron, passes cleanly down to the bottom right. So one good positional shot here. And he could be levelling things up. Good vision. Well done, Aaron. I'm glad we brought you in. <laughs> you are quite good at this. I've forgotten because I've not seen you for so yeah. long. Oh. Oh. I would imagine that has probably rolled off because he is potting that to the thick side of the of the pocket there, but I do think for to miss it by as far as he did, probably a little raw on that. Yeah, certainly wouldn't have expected him to miss it by quite as far as that. Extension called. Well, Oh, Fleming will know for sure whether he felt it did roll. You are playing right across the sort of nap of the cloth though, aren't you? Yeah. So it just can happen. Jack Whelan will just be happy to be back at the table and he's giving himself an opportunity here to go into the problem yellow and eight ball straight away. Key shot coming up. Well, he's just going to take this one off the table at the top. I think the red just near the left centre, just hindering him ever so slightly with his queuing. So trying to take that out of the question. Has he come a bit too far to play the breakout now? Yeah, I think he was looking to play um, what is left here, the plant or either the bottom yellow. But this finish he's going for is um, anything but easy. And certainly the, the bad yellow at the moment. There's um, not really an, an easy way to break it out. And if he is to break it out, he needs probably a lot of power because he would be sending the yellow into the, the black and the red, which is going to hold the yellow there, if anything. So, yeah, if he's going for the finish here, it's certainly not easy. and A thin plant, but... Is the cue ball going into this bad area now? I'm not sure. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it is. It must have been his plan all along. How well has that turned out? Yeah, it's a fantastic shot. A little bit fortunate for the cue ball to stay where it has for his bad ball, but it's it's as played and uh, a fantastic shot there. Everything going in Jack Whelan's direction early doors in this match. Obviously, we're not even 10 minutes in, but Mark Fleming's had a chance. Missed the ball to the middle pocket. And Jack Whelan has capitalised. Keeps it in a little bit more than Jordan does, but um, yeah, certainly both players show you what they're thinking out there. And I think he's going to get the next opportunity as well as well it's just so consistent all the time and it's interesting because I think he took a bit off that one certainly around the 60-70% mark you feel and it's worked out well well there's not many players that can actually take as much off the break as Jack and still pop balls and leave decent finishes as often as he does I wouldn't mind that yellow dropping in the centre, but it has stayed on the table. These are really nice and open. Coming round to have a look at the plan, but no need to play that shot if he doesn't want to. Yeah, and to be honest, if, if the, the yellow over the left middle, if that did drop in there, this was a very straightforward finish, but probably has to play a, a positional shot now. He's um, so probably going to use the bottom rail come back out to the middle of the table doesn't want to be hampered by these has it just flicked out for the the red into the right centre looks like it has the way he's aiming his cue there he's, he's looking at his positional shot after this red so a little bit fortunate there he certainly didn't want to go into them yellows on that last shot Mr. 
manoeuvred himself well though in this break definitely getting towards the business end hard work has been done and as the best do when they are at their very best freezing their opponent out Yeah, and what he's doing there with his cue was he was just looking at an area where he can leave the cue ball for the the red into the left centre, and basically just pointing his cue at a, a target of you know how much room he had really to to land in. So obviously if he was outside of the the area that he was leaving his cue in there, probably would have been leaving an angle he didn't want to, and that's all he all he was doing there. Making an imaginary box on the table. Yeah. No mistakes for the eight ball. And of course we'll have the ladies semi-finals and finals. Ending with the pro event final. Where Jordan Shepherd awaits the winner of this one. He has made a ball, Mark Fleming, so he will have second opportunity in this match to get his first frame on the board but problems once again here Aaron yeah and, and although I would say that at first glance the yellows look like the best balls I'd certainly be doing what he's doing now and going for the reds and what he's got is a shot off two rails here to develop the bad red and he's played that very well the only problem now is he's the eight ball is still a little bit tied up. It does go into the right corner, but the only problem there is probably not an obvious last red to leave to get the cue ball near the left centre pocket, which would leave the eight ball into the right corner. Oh, I think this has gone wrong. Yeah, referee coming in, see if this is touching ball. It is touching ball. So he's going to have to play away from the one closest to the cue ball and his options are very limited. Red off the yellow into the centre, a possibility. Or maybe off the other yellow into the corner. Yeah, and what he's played there, he's actually just, um, just tried to get a good cue ball at the bottom end of the table and... It's quite a good shot actually because it's. I was agreeing with you there, you know, probably looking at attacking and trying to pot that off, off the yellow. But he's found a good place with the cue ball there, and Jack certainly not got an easy shot now. Yeah, it was interesting. Jack not in the mood to be messing around here at all. Well, he's not too happy, but I think this one at the bottom of the table, he can cut across and get back up to the two in the breaking area can he not he can do and the only problem is the yellow nearest to the right hand corner he's just tied that up um, quite a bit and to be honest it's going to be very tough to get on that ball now and it's to be honest it's not just getting on that ball it's also landed on his next ball after it because unless he just gets where he pointed his cue there probably can't get on his next ball after it so yeah because of that will he take this one that's you know nearest to us into the centre well he's not doing I think plan. he's going to try and get on this bad ball now well he isn't he wants to be high needs as much angle as possible I just thought he might snip the one he was closest to the one he's about to play now into the right centre and then leave the angle on the next one but this is tough Oh, he's now looking at cutting it back. Does this mean that the yellow next to the eight ball goes into the bottom right-hand pocket? I would say it doesn't because where he's aiming his cue there, the angle is actually to come round off the bottom rail side rail and then the cue ball go into, into the eight ball and the yellow. So if, it, if that's what he's playing for, he's looking to leave the cue ball now near the centre pocket. He's gone in off. Wow, he hasn't got enough, but... Go on, I've interrupted you there, you can. Yeah, what he was wanting to do was leave 
probably just above the centre pocket and where he's left the cue ball now I think he's probably got no shot and he's still having a look at the angle I mean he would probably do well to miss the jaws of the bottom left corner big shot for Jack Whelan here wow what can you say about that a little bit fortunate no doubt but when it's going for you it really is going for you and at the moment it's going for Jack Whelan but what you might not have noticed there on that shot, he actually potted that um, to the thin side of the pocket as well because if he'd have potted that in the centre of the pocket or thick, I think the cue ball would have not gone anywhere near where he was trying to and actually potting that ball thin meant that he had you know, at least a chance of breaking into them balls, so it was a very good shot actually. In stroke is the derby man on that break. Working fantastically well for him. <coughs> Once again, no way near at max power, but lots of control and wow, well, near on a perfect break, you have to say. It certainly is, and it's actually frustrating as a player to watch Jack break like he is doing. Probably like 70% power at most, and yeah, obviously, yeah, it's just, I can't believe how he does it, really, the break. It really is working for him, though, out there. We saw a couple of months ago Mark Selby adopt a break, which was around 40-50%, and that worked extremely well for him, didn't it? Yeah, and it's certainly not a break that you could do in you know, your, your club tables, your pub tables. Certainly not a break where you could take power off it and expect to pop balls every time, but um, certainly Jack's mastered that break in these tournaments especially. And it's just given him first opportunity off every break he's had so far in this match. And if it's working, don't change it for sure. Looking good for 5 0 here is Jack Whelan. Just needs to make sure with this yellow down the rail, which he has done. I think he's got the gap between the red and the yellow. Right centre, and then possibly the one to the bottom after that. Back up for the one in the middle and safely deposit the eight ball. Easy work out there for Jack. More frustration for Mark Fleming. Who, since that roll-off across the table, hasn't had a look in. Yeah, and obviously these matches can happen. Um, certainly doesn't happen often, but from uh, Mark's point of view here, he's just got to accept that this has happened and just got to try and give yourself the best chance to get back into the match you know it might might not get the chances but you know that's pool sometimes and all he can really do now is just try and try and get himself back in the match as best he can no problems for mr Whelan. very often i think at least he can just try and enjoy himself out there and probably not, you know, take it too much to heart what's happened so far. So I think, you know, if he was maybe a, more of a regular in these later stages of these tournaments, probably would be beating yourself up a little bit more. But, yeah, they certainly just, just got to go out and enjoy it now and see how close he can bring this back. Well, he is going to get first dibs. On frame number six. Yellows look the better colour set to me. And they do to Mark Fleming as well. But it's not without problems. Yeah, and his bad yellow here is the one furthest down the table and will certainly be looking to develop that ball as soon as possible. Yeah, one shot's time, or two shot's time, sorry, Aaron, maybe. Wow, it must go to the bottom right-hand corner. 
if it doesn't, what he what he might have played for here is the yellow to the left middle, but no, it does it does go to the right corner. So you're right. Yeah, and that makes things an awful lot easier. So at first glance, but like Mark might have needed, might have had a couple of headaches. But everything now does have a pocket. Pocket. It's a clear run to the finishing line, but we're about to find out how comfortable he is feeling. Despite that scoreboard pressure. And it's always hard to get your first frame on the board in a match as well, especially when you've lost a few early on. Um, yeah, it's never easy to get the first frame on the board. Incorporating all the skills you need to be a professional pool player is very difficult, but temperament and controlling your emotions is right up there. Mark's had to show his ability to do that here. It's a different type of pressure when you're 5-0 down and at the table, having been frozen out, trying to win your first one in a big semi-final. That is very well played indeed. Has he gone far enough? Or is he going to have to use the bottom cushion? I think he is. Unless he opts to play the eight ball up into the top left-hand corner, Aaron. Yeah, I think he will still be playing for the top left-hand corner, but he can still use the bottom rail if needed and should be no problems, really. Well, there's a little bit in between shots, but the corner will be his target, I'm sure. So this eight ball to get your first game on the board in this semi-final. He's feeling it. No doubt about that. Very good by Mark Fleming. And the way Jack Whelan has been breaking, I'm sure Mark will be fearing the worst. Cue ball over to the side cushion this time. Not straight up the middle, but it's made no difference. Really does get through the pack well. But Paul would be disappointed by his own very high standards, I'm sure, Aaron. Yeah, I mean, for a lot of the players on the tour, you're just happy if you don't go in the centre pocket with a cue ball. But I can imagine Jack is, if he doesn't screw that white back, dead down the centre of the table he's probably disappointed I can certainly relate to that yeah just coming over to the left hand side of the table going to deal with the two in the breaking area the red that's just above the eight ball passes into the bottom left hand pocket will take some getting on, he's, that's what he's just come round to have a look at, so that will be the target after the two in the breaking area, I'm sure. Wow, what sort of angle, if any, has he got here? Just needs a little bit, just to avoid that yellow he's closest to with the cue ball and get over to the right-hand side. Key shot in the finish. Yeah, and he, he is a little bit straight here because... He's looking to just screw this back and just about land on a gap for the red into the left corner. But he's played that very well to get there. That's a fantastic shot. How oh, well has he cued that? I mean, I thought at best there he could just about land on this red now. and I mean, he's, he's if anything, he's come too far. <laughs> Potted it slightly thick to make sure he could hold the cue ball off the yellow. And 
And you have to say, Aaron, it's been a bit of a clinic loading up once again. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. He'll be happy, but unlike his opposition, he's facing problems after the break each time. Whichever colour set he chooses here, Aaron. You would think reds for obvious reasons, but with the red being over the bottom left-hand pocket, well, it is going to be yellows. Give us your thoughts on the colour set choice there, Aaron. Yeah, I think the reds were tricky there, and the reason he's not gone for the reds is because there's, there's only five reds on the table, and obviously having to pot one to be on the reds obviously brings you down to four reds, and then probably couldn't really clear up and once you leave yourself in a position where you let your opponent back to the table with more balls on them than yourself you're probably going to struggle to win the frame and that even and that doesn't matter whether you've got a pocket covered or not in these in this rule set so certainly the reason why he went for the yellow balls just probably because there's more balls on the table yes because of that this Frey may have a bit of mileage. Match clock not becoming an issue quite yet. Suppose the only upside to your opponent going 6 1 ahead of you is going to leave plenty of time for a comeback. Extension called. No attempt at a pot here for Jack Whelan. Just looking to. Nudges balls out into potable positions. Will be wary of Mark wanting to play a loss of turn at some point, I'm sure. So, a little bit of cat and mouse for now. Well, he's left Jack a few choices here. I feel like Jack has probably got to go for some sort of finish now because with Mark opening those two yellows up, if he leaves Mark another chance at the table, he can play the loss of turn shot now. However, Jack has been very fortunate to leave the cue ball where he has. Yeah, nothing but a very thin cut to the top left available for Mark Fleming. I think he's just got to just try and just concentrate on potting this yellow and work out what he can do from there. Certainly nothing obvious on our, obviously if he goes for the loss of turn shot now, still will be leaving Jack a possible chance to clear up. Yeah, where is he going to play the cue ball and not leave at least a shot at a double? I think all he can do really is just try and yeah, just leave it near near the corner, which he has done. Well, is there some sort of a double available for Jack here? If there is, it's not easy. Possibly a shot to the top right where the eight ball is. Yeah, that's what he's got in mind. And is his cue ball going into the cluster? No, not at that pace. No attempt at the pot, you feel, there. I think there was an attempt at the pot. Uh, the reason he's not hit it hard is he thought if he missed it, possibly could have covered that pocket where the eight ball was. Yeah, just his body language. As soon as he sort of realised it was going in, his shoulders dropped, and I thought, oh, he wasn't going for it. But like you said, Aaron, it's, it's a chance. That's yeah, an excellent yeah. shot. It's a fantastic shot to hold the cue ball where he has. Still not an easy shot now. He's going to be putting the red into the left centre. Needs some sort of cannon, but can only really glance off these balls with the cue ball. And the cue ball is going to be running probably quite fast around the table off the top cushion. Well, does this red pass 
into any pocket. Does he have any shot? Cushion first into the opposite corner. Uh, the think, opposite middle, I sorry. I think it cuts and... You yeah. think it cuts off the yellow? Just goes straight in, I think. The way he was looking at it, he must go straight in. Aaron thinks this match is over, and I think he might be right. The easiest of eight balls for a place in tonight's final. Jack Whelan has put on an absolute clinic of a performance in, the, in today's second semi-final. He advances and will face Jordan Shepard, looking to further embellish his CV on what's already been an incredible career.